And now for something completely different. You spoke of how dreams could be a way of your subconscious offering you insights. Can you speak further of the evolutionary reasons for dreams? And do you suppose lucid dreaming could be a further enhancement of this process? Sweet question. Yeah. Um, all right. I will say the primary value of dreams. So first of all, I should say, the more you dig into this, the more you discover that there are lots of different kinds of dreams and that one person's dreams don't look like another. And so there is a huge landscape to be explored here. And one thing I have been saying forever is that we should figure out what hunter-gatherers uh, dream about before there are no more hunter-gatherers, because yeah. it would be wonderful to know what the base state was. But what we can say is that an awful large percentage of dreams appear to be scenario building. That is to say, while your brain is not occupied by processing active incoming data, it takes probabilistic uh it takes a probabilistic look at things that you fear, things, opportunities you might uh, avail yourself of, and it runs you through scenarios so that when you get to these things, it's not your first time through, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be fully rendered. It just has to be good enough, and you have to suspend your disbelief enough that when the scenario hits, you can sort of try it out. And I will say I've learned one thing about scenarios from my own experiments with lucid dreaming, which is if I am lucid dreaming, difficult state to get to but if I can get there and then I say well this is my brain writing this story I should be able to predict what's going to happen next it never works <laughs> it literally has never once worked right that tells you something it tells so you're, you you're saying that the prediction has been wrong every time every single yeah. time as if to have predicted it is to invalidate that right. storyline like the whole point of scenario building would be to run you through things that you don't see coming so that Right. And so my point would be whatever part of your brain makes the movies, the conscious part of your brain is not allowed in because the thing wouldn't work. It wouldn't be valuable to you if it was. So yeah, um, <clears throat> your dreams are not a safe space. <laughs> my dreams are very dangerous, I have to say. <laughs> I'm not um, talking about your dreams in particular, but no. I mean, I think that the, the hypothesis here is that dreams are explicitly not a safe space. They are where your consciousness goes to actually make you safer in your waking life, but that means that they're going to put you in, in apparent danger in your sleep space. Yeah, there's no point in running you through scenarios in which things are all cool and nothing's going to go wrong. So right. my dreams are really about stuff going wrong all the time. Um but that explains why you sleep the way you do. I guess it does. <laughs> yes. It's a little bit chaotic. But uh, um, okay, as to your final question about um, lucid dreams. Lucid dreams, I believe, are an occasional phenomenon, which may be adaptive. That is to say, the discovery that you are in a dream, which usually wakes you up. So learning to stay asleep through that is um, not easy. But nonetheless, it happens at some low rate under normal circumstances for people who have not trained themselves. But training yourself to stay asleep even when you become lucid, which is exhausting, but it's fascinating what you will discover you do and don't have control over, that is a hack, right? You're not supposed to have conscious access to your dreams. You can gain it. You will lose stuff. You will gain stuff. Um, so I would say to the extent that humans hack their own cognition, this is a totally valid hack, and I'm sure that it has um, important uh, positive evolutionary outgrowths. Um, but probably mostly it is not. Um, the reason that we don't have lucid dreams is that in general that does not bring you the highest value.